Uh, Tuesday, January 24th, 2017, Monaco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. So I like to talk about currencies uh, and how they reflect, you know, the wealth of a nation, in my opinion. And particularly today, I'm going to talk about sterling, uh, the pound sterling, the British currency. And mainly because, as you probably heard from the, my uh, previous video yesterday, I was in Switzerland yes, uh, last week. Uh, I left on the, uh, on the Sunday the week before and came back uh, this Sunday. And uh, I used to live in Switzerland. Uh, I left Switzerland in 1992 to come and work in London. I used to work in, uh, in Switzerland. I was offered a job in London. And at that time, uh, one pound or one pound was uh, equivalent of 2.4 Swiss francs. And I remember a month after I got here, there was an, the ERM crisis. Then the pound dropped to like 140 or 160 or thereabouts. So a big a big drop, but then it stabilized over the years, and uh, you know the Swiss franc strengthened against the dollar. Uh, the pound, you know, wheat has weakened against the dollar in the last, you know, since two thousand and eight. And recently, you know, with the Swiss franc franc being one to one to the dollar, you know, the exchange rate of the pound to the Swiss franc is the same as uh, cable, for example, which is uh, British pound versus dollar. And prior to, uh, you know, Brexit last year, the uh, pound had been hovering around 140 to 160 against the Swiss franc. So compared to where, you know, we dropped in 1992, the pound was holding on fairly well. But since then, you know, uh, we are right now, you know, around 124, the uh, British pound to the Swiss franc. And... Uh, you know, traveling to Switzerland, uh, I did change some uh, some pounds into Swiss francs, and I only got like 108 uh, here in the UK. I should have waited probably to get get it in Switzerland. The, their rates are a little better. But, uh, you know, what I wanted to talk about is how uh, when you go to Switzerland from the UK, you realize how, um, you know, the UK economy and the currency has been hollowed uh, out uh, completely. You know, the, the currency is just being debauched uh, so much. You know, we're almost one to one. And, you know, you know, and 25 years ago, the pound was buying two, two francs 50. Switzerland is an expensive place to go uh, to live. Uh, the standard of living is a lot higher and people earn a lot more. But still... Uh, I think it just goes to show how, you know, it's in the, the UK economy. And I'm not blaming uh, just the UK economy. You know, most of the developed countries' uh, economy is uh, a big uh, illusion. And I, I would say Switzerland, even though the central bank there has been doing a lot of QE and negative interest rates, the Swiss economy is still performing well. And I'm not trying to also... Uh, to disparage the UK, I'm just because I like, you know, I live here, you know, this is my home, but I'm trying to uh, explain, you know, just looking at things like the FTSE and your uh, house value uh, is quite, you know, uh, misleading, if I would say, you know, because with the pound dropping so much, has the FTSE really, uh, you know, appreciated in real wealth and I think the Swiss franc is a good currency to look at and the dollar as well uh, so uh, and the other thing I wanted to talk about is all the debt you know the the UK economy the UK government we were we were one of the most indebted uh, economies in the developed world and so is the U US but I'm focusing on the UK and uh, one thing I did while I was at the airport when I went to Switzerland I bought uh, the uh, Economist magazine, which uh, I've never really, you know, enjoyed it too much because they've got a huge range of articles and there's only a few that interest me. And I used to buy it years ago, didn't read the whole thing. And uh, and I also don't like a lot of what they, 
their views, but sometimes, you know, I was at the airport, I thought, oh, let's buy The Economist, uh, have a read, you know, see what, what they're saying. You know, it's very global, it's a very globalist uh, publication, of course, but sometimes you need to uh, see what your, uh, you know, the the elites are talking about. And the other magazine I, I bought at the airport is a, an older one because it came out in December, is The World in 2017, which was a lot of people were interested about. I'm not gonna talk about these cards, by the way, but one thing I wanted to talk about, uh, in the back of The Economist every week, they've got economic and financial indicators. And that's really good because they've got the GDP of the major countries, They've got, uh, you know, the budget balance of the major countries. And that's what I wanted to talk about because we hear, you know, always in the financial press that the UK and the US economy are leading the way our GDP is growing. But one thing they don't talk about is the budget deficit because I've talked before in other videos that the way GDP is calculated is, uh, you know, GDP equals uh, investment, uh, expenditure, government expenditure, you know, consumer expenditure, government expenditure, minus the, the trade balance. And the government part of it, let's say if the, a government is running a uh, balanced budget, the government will not add anything to the GDP. But if a government, for example, is uh, running a 10% of GDP budget deficit, it's going to add uh, 10% to the GDP through uh, all the borrowing it's doing. So one thing I wanted to look at are the uh, GDP, the latest GDP data, let's say for, for Britain, they call it Britain here, not UK. So the latest data uh, third quarter last year was 2.2%. But if you look at the uh, budget deficit, the latest number is 3.7% deficit. So basically, you know, you subtract that, that's uh, the UK is actually without, if the government wasn't borrowing as much, the UK economy uh, would be growing uh, at uh, minus 1.5%. So it would be shrinking the UK economy and probably shrinking more because government uh, spending uh, spreads a little bit, you know, into the private economy. So there you, you know, there you have it, you know, Britain, 2.2% GDP sounds really good, but the deficit is negative 3.7. Um, while Germany, for example, the same equi equivalent data, GDP 1.7. So on the surface, people say, oh yeah, the U Britain is growing a lot better than Germany, but the budget balance of uh, Germany is Plus, one, they've got a surplus of 1%. So if you add, really, uh, the government is actually uh, paying back money, you know, 1% of GDP. They're not spending. So if you add 1% to 1.7, you, you can see the German economy grew uh, in real terms by 2.7% uh, instead of the minus 1.5 in, uh, in Britain. And uh, let's have a look at Switzerland. So 1.3% uh, GDP uh, third quarter, uh, almost half of uh, uh, Britain's, uh, you know, 2.2%. But then you go across and you look at the uh, budget deficit for Switzerland. Well, they're running a 0.2% surplus. So you add that to 1.3, it's 1.5% uh, growth, really, Switzerland. Uh, so the UK uh, or Britain uh, shrinking by one and a half and Switzerland actually growing by one and a half. And let's go to the US. Uh, while the US, the latest data, 1.7% GDP growth annualized and uh, budget balance minus 3.2. So the US as well, you know, <laughs> basically running a negative uh, GDP if you don't include the government spending and borrowing. So, um, yeah, that's, you know, just goes to show that, uh, you know, it's a, an illusion that uh, countries like the UK and the US are doing really well. 
yes, you know, if you just create the debt and government spending without constraint, yeah, the economy will do well for a while. But in the long term, you know, that's why the British pound is so weak. And I expect the dollar, you know, to to continue to weaken. All the fiat currencies are sinking. But, you know, they take their turns. Right now, the dollar is fairly strong. But I expect the dollar uh, to continue to weaken against real things, you know, precious metals. And uh, other currencies will do the same. So it's a zero-sum game, you know, the currency game. You might be able to time it, you know, the FX trading. And the other thing I wanted to talk about is the UK budget deficit because we were promised uh, in 2010 by the incoming conservatives that they'd balance the budget, the government budget, uh, by 2015. But now they've even like moved it past, they, they're saying now that they won't even balance it by 2020. So I think the market and investors are starting to lose faith in the UK uh, in government and the manage, you know, financial management of the UK Treasury, you know. So I don't really, uh, I do have pounds because you still need it to use here, but I try to avoid pounds, uh, having too much, uh, you know, pounds sterling in the bank. Uh, as I said before, gold and silver is still the best thing to have, best currencies. I guess it doesn't hurt at the moment if you have investments, you know, mining shares, which are in US dollars or Canadian dollars, because those currencies are doing fairly well against the pound. So yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, you know, the illusion that the UK economy is doing well and that uh, things, you know, are honky-dory, as they say. Uh, I do expect, you know, uh, prices to continue to rise in the UK. You know, they have risen already since Brexit, but they take a while to rise because, you know, multinationals and companies, they have contracts with foreign, uh, you know, uh, providers of goods or services. And those contracts sometimes run for a while at, at a fixed at exchange rate. So once these contracts expire and they have to set a new exchange and, you know, imports are going to going to rise, I think, in the UK and uh, the pound will continue to drop and uh, the pound in your pocket uh, will not buy as much as it did, you know, a year or two or five years ago. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, uh, share it far and wide. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. If you'd like to donate to my channel, there's some links uh, below in the description. Um, I accept uh, Bitgold, Bitcoin. I have a PayPal and Patreon account. I'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye.